In this video, you're going to learn to create this ink bleed effect all in After Effects, which you can use on text, illustrations, footage, whatever you want. And it's completely procedural. So in just one click, you can change the ink pattern completely. This is the effect we're going to create, and you can download this project file for free down in the description to use in your own projects. Now, this effect was inspired by this tutorial from Texture Labs. Texture Labs is an amazing channel with some of the best Photoshop tutorials out there. Their method for creating this ink bleed effect using actions is really genius. So I tried to see if I could replicate that in After Effects, and this is what I came up with. Now, our methods are different, so I'd recommend you check out their process if you're interested in another technique that is inside of Photoshop instead. Now, we're starting in an almost new comp in After Effects. We've got a white solid as our background layer and a type layer as well. Now the type is what we're going to affect with our ink bleed and we want to be able to swap this out later for whatever we want. So let's pre-compose it with Control Shift C and call it ink base because we always label our layers. And what's going to drive this effect is a blur. Now, if we go up into our effects panels, we can see there are a lot of blur and sharpen effects. Now they all have subtle differences. I'll use Gaussian blur 99% of the time because it's simple, fast to render, and you probably wouldn't tell the difference between the other blurs anyway. But for this effect, we are going to use the Rolls Royce of blur, camera lens blur. So let's add that to our ink base layer. Now camera lens blur is a much more accurate blur that gets a nice bokeh effect and it can be tweaked much more. Just look at all these settings we have. But all of that does come at the expense of longer render times. And why we're using it for this effect is the ability to use a blur map. A blur map is another layer that tells this effect what areas to blur and how much to blur them. So let's create our blur map. We're going to do that on a new solid. So create one with control plus Y and the color doesn't really matter here. And to make it really clear how the blur map works, let's add the effect gradient ramp which just creates a gradient on this layer. And let's move the endpoint so our gradient goes horizontally and move it in the middle so it's going to cover all of our type. And now let's turn the visibility of this layer off because we don't need to see it. And then go into our ink base layer and choose the blur map, layer one blur map. And we want to make sure this is selected to effects and masks, not just the source. So it will take into account that gradient we just added. And now let's increase the blur radius to 100 so we can really see what's happening. So now this is becoming more clear. On the right, no blur at all. Then it gets blurrier towards the left. If we toggle on our blur map, we can see that where it was black, no blur. Where there's gray, a bit more blur. And where it's white, the maximum amount of blur. Now this is a really powerful technique. Let's drop down to half resolution so we can see it a bit faster. Let's toggle off this blur map, but we can still select it and move around these endpoints of the gradient map. And you can see by changing where the black and the white values are, we change where the blur is. And that's how we're gonna get that ink bleedy effect. So let's turn back on our blur map and delete this gradient ramp layer. And now we're going to add the effect fractal noise. Now this generates a random pattern of black, white, and gray. And throughout this process, I'm going to keep toggling on and off the visibility of this blur map so we can see how it's affecting our layers underneath. Now already, this is looking a little bit closer to what we want. Some parts are blurred and some parts aren't. And it's in a more organic and random way. But here it still looks far too small and grainy. So let's fix that. On our blur map, we can see on fractal noise, there are different fractal types. This is basic, but you can also choose things like swirly, rocky, threads. And what I found works best to make this look like running ink is smeary. So if we toggle this layer off, we can see it doesn't really look very good at the moment. So let's make some adjustments. Let's increase the contrast up from 100 to 250. Now that's looking a bit better. And now let's increase the size. So let's open up the transform property and increase the scale from 100 all the way up to 500. There, much, much bigger. Here's how that looks now. This is looking much more like we want it. Like some of these areas have been hit with water. It's diluted the ink and it is spreading out away from the letter. And in these sort of round pool shapes as well, where it's more collected. Now to animate this, we just go onto our ink base layer and we're gonna animate the blur radius, which is essentially the blur amount in camera lens blur. At the start, let's keyframe it at zero blur radius. And at around two seconds in, let's increase this to 150. There, so as the blur increases, the ink spreads out. Let's select those keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them to make it a bit more of a smoother animation. There, now it's getting close, but there are a few things that will really help sell this as ink running and not just some strangely blurred blobs. And if you are finding this video useful, please give it a like. It really does help me and the channel out more than you might think. And better yet, it's 
absolutely free. Also, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on more techniques like this in my upcoming videos. And now, a quick word from this video sponsor, Skillshare, a brilliant online learning community with thousands and thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious folk. And now they are offering another tempting educational treat. Skillshare now has live classes where you can experience real-time inspiration from your favorite teachers all whilst watching and working along with other members. Some classes in my list that I'm taking inspiration from that I think are a perfect way to upskill as a motion designer are Emotion in Motion, Animate Facial Expressions Using Illustrator and After Effects by Ilya Oiska, and Modeling in Cinema 4D, Creating Your First 3D Scene by Russ Etheridge. Skillshare classes are a great way to improve your skills and give yourself more opportunities in the future. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, so that that is a fantastic investment. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Next is to add some texture. Now I have in the project this paper texture, which is some black paint brushed over some paper. Let's drag that into our comp. And this texture is also included in that project file. And then we're gonna set its blending mode from normal to screen. And to make it a bit more obvious, let's add the curves effect and drag up the middle to increase the brightness so it's more obvious there. Now we want the paper texture to be on the background. So let's duplicate that texture with Control plus D. And on the bottom one, we're gonna set it from screen to multiply. And let's add the invert effect as well. And place that above the curves effect and the layer stack. Next, we're gonna rotate this texture, pressing R on our keyboard to open up the rotation property and just rotate this around 90 degrees. So it's not covered up by the texture layer above. And then adjust this curves effect till we get a nice darkness of the paper that feels natural. I think around there is fine. Now, if we play it back, that already looks way more realistic just from the context clues of having the texture on the paper there. Now, if we take a look at some reference, like this image I have pulled up here, we can see around the edges of this watercolor or ink bleed, the color is a bit more darker. And that kind of outlines some areas of the paint where some of the pigment has been maybe pushed towards the edge. And we don't see that with our blur effect because it just really pushes something further away from the middle and makes it more transparent. So we want a bit more variance. And that is actually surprisingly easy to do. So let's create a new adjustment layer with Control plus Alt plus Y. Let's drag that over our ink base and give that another color. And we're gonna add the effect Find Edges, which I don't think I've ever found a practical use for before. And it does exactly what it says it does on the tin. It finds contrasting areas and creates a line on that edge. Now it isn't so defined on our blurry parts, but that's okay because it does definitely add more definition, more of a separation. And all we need to do from here is change its blending mode from normal to multiply. And that applies it on top of our blur and if we toggle it on and off, we can see just what a difference it makes. Now it is subtle, but I think it does really help sell the effect as something a bit more natural and makes it look more like ink or watercolor paint would behave. Now we might not like the pattern, the way that this ink is being displaced, like how it pokes out of the bottom of this B here. We might want to change that. And that's very easy to do too. We go up to our blur map and in our fractal noise effect, we go down to the evolution options and we have a random seed here. Now this fractal noise is a randomly generated pattern and that random pattern is based on this random seed. So if we change this number to anything else, it will update and create a new pattern. And a new pattern means a new direction where our ink has blurred and pooled. So let's turn it off and toggle a few different random seeds and some do look better than others. So try a few options to see which one you like. Now, if you want some more control over what areas are bleeding, say we really like this one, but we don't like how this B is completely illegible, we can change that by using a mask on this blur map. So we can create a mask by selecting our shape or our pen tool. I'm just gonna select this ellipse here and draw it over the bottom left corner of this B. And now just by drawing that mask, we can see that only areas within that mask are being blurred and there's a very sharp edge. So let's change both of those things. We can change the mask from add to subtract, so it removes the blur from that area. And to get rid of the harsh edge, we press F on our keyboard to bring up the mask feather, and then we can increase that. And that creates a gradient where it will you know, get slightly blurry and transition in between them. And this is what our blur map looks like now with just a feathered hole in the middle. And keep adding more of these masks if you want more control over what areas are visible and what aren't. Now, because everything that is bleeding here is within this ink base pre-comp, we can go in, we can adjust this text, add more elements, or even drag in some footage. So I'm gonna drag in my own YouTube intro because I'm ever the narcissist. And let's go back into our main comp and see how that looks. And now we can see our text and our footage both being blurred and creating this inky bleed effect. And there you have it. Again, don't hesitate to download this project file for free down in the description. Have a play around and apply some of these techniques to your own projects. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.